Well, hello there. Thanks for joining me uh, on this Friday. I hope you had a, a great week and a good Friday. And I'm excited to uh, do a painting demo here um, today or this evening, um, depending on where you are. Uh, it's five o'clock where I am over here in San Diego. Um, but this is going to be a fun one, I think. I love this technique. Uh, I don't do it as much as I should because every time I do it, I love it. It's a, I got to do more of these, but it's the string pulling technique. Um, it's a very fun one. And uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, hey, Donna and Novala and Jan. Thanks so much for uh, joining me live here. Um, and uh, Jan's learning a lot. Thank you so much, Jan. And uh, so this is going to be a fun technique, I think. Um, if you haven't tried this one yet, uh, I think you'll like it. It is a little more technically challenging than some of the other techniques. Um, it's a little more like drawing or painting with a brush than flipping a cup of paint over, uh, but it's a whole lot of fun. It's kind of mesmerizing to do. It's very relaxing. Um, I really enjoy it and you can kind of just focus on your painting and uh, create some amazing shapes and interesting um, color arrangements and things like that. Hey, Michelle, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so I think you're going to enjoy it. Hopefully I'll do a good one. It's been a little while since I've done a string pull, um, but I'll go over the technique and the supplies you need. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of, of materials or supplies. So I'll go over all of those. And uh, if you have any questions along the way, I'll uh, be looking over in the comments and answer any of your questions. And uh, I've got a new setup. So uh, I'm going to try something a little different. Um, tonight. I've got three cameras. It's crazy. So let me show you this. This is um, how, how technically crazy I'm getting. Whoa, three cameras. So I think I'm going to switch between, I'll keep it on one camera because that's probably going to be the easiest, but uh, I think I'm going to switch to the side view camera. This one over here. Um, this is the side view camera. I think it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing uh, on with this angle. So I'm going to primarily be working with this angle, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to flip over here. Again, we've got all kinds of people joining. So thank you and welcome everyone. We're doing a string pull technique uh, tonight. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, I think. So let me show you what I've got going on. And uh, I've got my little palette knife here. That's important. But um, so I'm going to be using just regular, um, this is just cotton string. I've got a whole bunch of um, you can get it in a couple different sizes. I just get this at the Home Depot or Lowe's. Hardware store is a great place. I'm sure they have it at fabric stores. Uh, here's one that I haven't opened yet. This is um, says ever built 100% cotton twine. Um, number, it's, let's see if there's a, I don't think there's, oh, it's a number 12. So that's probably the gauge, the thickness number 12. Um, so anything that's about this size, this is a little thicker one. Uh, this is a little thinner one. Um, they all work fairly the same. Uh, you could also use, um, what's it called? It's like a string in the baking section, um, like a cooking section of like uh, your grocery store. I think they have it for like, uh, uh, what is it, was it for? Like tying up poultry and things like that. Um, so they, they probably have it at grocery stores. Uh, I'm sure you could find this at most big box stores like Walmart and Target and stuff like that. Uh, yarn, uh, Michelle said yarn. Um, she's used yarn. Yarn will work too. Um, I have used also, uh, thanks Michelle. I've used like a jute string. It's like a really kind of gnarly string. Uh, that also works. Um, so kind of any kind of string that you can find, give it a shot. I, I'm sure you'll, um, you'll find it will work pretty well for you. But this is the one that I've used the most of and it works the best for me. Um, and then you could also use uh, the chain, um, doing a chain pull. And the chain is like, a, oh, I forget the name of it, but it's like a lamp cord chain. Uh, you see that... Um, on your like ceiling fans and things. You have the little uh, notch chain. Um, I've used the chain and it's it's cool, it's fun. It can create a different technique, uh, different, um, what am I trying to say? Texture on your, on your canvas. 
Um, one thing, it is a little more expensive than the string. It's actually a lot more expensive than the string. And um, once you use it, you have to throw it in a bucket of water so that you can get the paint off of it so you could reuse it. Um, so it's a little more cumbersome and a little more, there's a little more involved in using the, the chain. Uh, the string is very cheap and it's easy and then you just throw it away when you're done. Um, so I would recommend working with the string if you're just starting out with this technique to see if you like it or not. You can always go into the chain uh, and try that as well. They also have like a plastic chain. Uh, that's a little harder to find, I found, but uh, that also works pretty much the same as the, the steel chain. Ball something. Yeah, Novala said it's like a ball chain. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, Dean's Designs, ball chain. That is the name of the stuff. <laughs> so that is it. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, and Dean said she's. it's very cheap. Oops, that's not Dean. Sorry, Donna. How, hello, Donna. Um, it's very cheap for ball chain. Um, Dean, if you wouldn't mind, uh, or Deanne, I'm sorry. Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, letting me know where you get that. Um, Everywhere I've looked, it's it's a little more expensive, um, like at the Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, I'd love to know where you get your ball chain from. That would be awesome. It would help us all out, out a lot. So anyway, so that's the string I'm using today. Uh, I'm also using a palette knife. I'm going to use this to just uh, mix my uh, or cover my canvas. And let me flip to the top camera, and I'll show you what colors I'm going to be using. So here is my, it's a little crooked. Um, here is, uh, I'm working on a 12 by 16 and I'm going to be using two colors, just two colors. I'm going to keep it very simple for this demo. And, uh, I'm going to be using a silver for, this is, these are both leftover paints. I kind of combined a few different paints, but I'm going to be using a silver for my base coat. And, uh, like a, this is like a dark kind of metallic blackish purple color. Um, so that's going to be what I'm going to use for my string pulling. So like a like a two color string pull, a light base coat and a darker string pull. And then Deanne also says Amazon. Uh, so I'll check that out. Thank you very much for that. Uh, letting me know, letting us know about finding the uh, ball chain on Amazon. So that is awesome. So those are my two colors, the silver and this dark uh, blackish gold. Uh, or blackish, uh, it's like a metallic greenish black. Um, it's gonna, basically gonna look black. But if you're just starting out with this technique, I'd recommend going uh, simple, just trying a couple colors at, um, at first. Oh, and Jerry says, um, Jerry's found it at Michael's. I have never thought to look at Michael's for the ball chain. Thank you so much, Jerry and, uh, and De uh, Deanne. That is fantastic. So that is where we can go check out the ball, the ball chain. So um, I have done uh, string pulls with multiple colors and I have kind of a, uh, a unique little tool I created for that. And it's a little more advanced. Um, so we're just gonna keep it kind of simple for this demo, but it's fun to work in multiple colors. Um, and I will also uh, recommend if you're working on a, want a black or dark, uh, base coat to put on your canvas. Sometimes it can help to paint your paint your canvas the dark color first with a brush, just a light um, a light coat of paint, and then let that dry before you pour your base coat on. Uh, sometimes, especially with a chain pull, um, when you're pulling on the base coat, you could you could pull away the dark and reveal the canvas underneath. So I found that. Um, that's a good little tip if you're working with a darker base coat. Uh, the silver base coat's pretty light, so I'm not too worried about that happening. But um, it can pull, kind of pull the paint away and reveal some canvas underneath. So it's nice to give it a little uh, paint job first before we spread our base coat on the uh, darker, um, when we're using a darker base coat. So, you know, that's a long way of saying, <laughs> uh, Put a little, uh, just paint your canvas first and then put your base coat on. Whew, okay, I'm all, I'm all excited about the string pull. So um, it's gonna be fun. Okay, I'm gonna just check quick and uh, 
Uh, oh, okay. Novala says uh, it's on a spool in the jewelry uh, parts of Michael's. That is fantastic. Thank you, Novala and Jerry and uh, Deanne. I had no idea. I never ever would thought have to have looked for uh, the ball chain at Michael's. I'm going to go check it out now. So, okay. So we've got, I've already cut some strings. I recommend cutting a bunch in advance. They're about this long. So it's about, it's not quite two feet, maybe 18 inches or so. It's just a arbitrary size. Uh, I have my scissors here also, so I can cut them shorter or cut more if I need it. But I like to have a bunch ready to go. It just saves a lot of time. So I've got those kind of right over here, ready to go. And the next thing I'm going to do is um, spread on my base coat and then we'll get started. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And, uh, and Dana's Creations also says Hobby Lobby has it too. That's great to know. Um, all these places that I'm learning, wow. See, I'm too into the uh, uh, mechanical stuff. I'm always looking at the, whole, the hardware store first. So, but that's great. Okay, I'm going to uh, uh, do a lot more ball chain pulls now. So let me switch the can, the camera, and I will uh, spread my base coat. So here's the side view. We'll see how this works. Let me get rid of my little banner thingy up here. So that is a little better. And uh, go back to the comments. All right, we're ready to go. So I am going to just pour on my silver. This is kind of a grayish silver. It's a combination of a couple different uh, colors. And uh, this is a great technique to use your leftover paints um, and give it a shot and try it out. So when I'm spreading my base coat on, I'm not worried about the edges at all. Um, I'll always go back and paint those afterwards if I want to, but I'm not worried about covering the edges. Uh, but I do want a pretty even coat of paint covering the canvas. And I like to have it a little bit thicker than what I normally work with. We want kind of an even, uh, even coat. I don't want it too thick though. So it's um, kind of have to play around with that a little bit, but it's not, it's not super critical. It doesn't have to be uh, a, a, exactly a perfect uh, thickness of paint. Just work with kind of what you think will work good for you and then give it a try, and if uh, it doesn't work, you can always adjust it on the next one. I have actually a little bit too much paint, so you can always scoop it off and put some paint back in your cup. And I'm trying to get a nice even uh, surface. It doesn't have to be a perfectly even surface though. Um, and this paint, the consistency is a little thicker. Um, it's, it's, it's roughly about the same as my base, uh, my basic pouring um, formula. I like the slight mound when this, the paint streams off the stick. Oof. And, uh, but even a little thicker is good for this technique. You wanna avoid being too thin though. Uh, going too thin with your paints is, is gonna kind of cause the string and all the paint to kind of blend together too much. So I'm just kind of evening out. It's kind of like frosting a cake at this point. You know, if you can frost a cake halfway decent, you can do this. So here we go. It's not beautiful or anything. You could try pouring it on and tilting it around um, to get a perfectly even uh, smooth base, look, base coat of paint. Uh, I find that kind of tedious, and also um, it wastes a lot of paint. Like a lot of paint, you got to dump a lot of paint on your canvas um, to get it all evenly perfect when you're getting your base coat on. Uh, so I, I just generally just spread it on like this. So that's it. That is my base coat. I'm, again, not worried about the edges at all. Um, so we're ready to uh, dive into our string and our pull-in. And I'm gonna put that down there. And I think I'm going to, my 
camera wants to, uh, it's looking for focus. So I think what I'm going to do for the first uh, two shapes, I'm going to switch to the top camera just so I can show you a little more clearly what I'm doing. So now I can kind of show you what, what I have with my paint. I'm gonna move this over here a little bit. And so I've got my, my cup of paint. It's nice to have a stick in your paint. And I'm gonna take a string and I just push the whole string in there and I use the stick and I just get it all covered in paint. This is a very simple process. So, and I leave about a few inches at the end to hold on to. And then when I pull the string out of the paint, I like to use the stick and uh, I'll put it this way. You can kind of pull the string against the stick and it kind of pulls off a lot of the excess paint. Oh, and then you got to worry about the, be careful of the, 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 the dangerous end right here with all the paint on it. But pulling it out of, of the cup and using the stick, you don't have all these drips running down your string. So I've got my paint in on my string. And now the first couple shapes I like to do on my canvas, I like to make them uh, kind of rather crazy. So I'll just throw the string on there any which way, really. And then I'll start, start pulling it. And, and I like to kind of maybe alternate it a little bit with these first couple shapes. And so we have a really nice dark line where the string goes into the cup. And then as you pull it off, you just get some interesting effects as you pull the string through the paint. And in these first couple shapes I do, uh, I kind of base everything else that I do with the rest of the painting on these first couple big shapes. And so I like this one. I think that's cool. I like how the, the string kind of came up off the canvas. These are kind of happy accidents that occur when you're working with the, the string. Um, so I just, and I pull the string off, I let it just lay right on my paper there. And then I do another one. So that's a, a pretty good start, I think. I'm going to put my string back in my paint. And then Again, I just kind of pull the string over the stick to kind of get the excess off. There we go. So this one, and now I'm gonna be thinking a little bit more about where I'm gonna place this. I kind of want a dark uh, edge over here. So I'm going to kind of drop my string on the canvas and then put it in kind of an interesting, just an interesting roundish, um, shape and then I'll start just pulling it off and right there I had the string up too high and you can kind of see it lifted off the canvas not too worried about that you could always go back even and put the string back on the canvas and now I'm pulling closer down to the the surface of the canvas And I like to alter the direction I'm pulling the string. And notice right here, we've got, uh, I'm pulling a whole bunch of the base coat up and we've got this big paint puddle right here. That's one of the big, um, the biggest issues with the string pull is these paint puddles forming. So I'm not worried about that right now, but uh, I pulled the string off. So I got this big, these big globs of paint. So that's kind of the biggest, can be the biggest uh, hassle with this technique, but I'll show you how to get around these and how to fix that. So I don't love this shape right here. I really like this one. I don't like this one. So I'm gonna start working and getting, I'm gonna wanna get rid of this, uh, all this this big puddle here, and I'm gonna rework all that. So, and this, this is just a, a process of adding a shape and then seeing if you like it. If you don't like it, just rework it or add another shape. So I'm gonna, do the same thing. And you might be want, might be asking yourself if you should put all your strings in at once in the paint. 
And uh, I found that that is a, creates a gigantic mess. So it's, um, cause I've tried it. Uh, it's very hard to just pull one string out then. They all wanna kinda uh, come out together. So one string at a time is kind of the way I like to do it. So I'm going to rework this. And now I'm going to do what I call an edge or a side shape. So I'm going to start with the string off of the canvas. And then put it in an interesting shape. And that's OK. And then pull the whole thing off that side. And there's that puddle again. Now, one thing we can do to help move that puddle is I can tilt the canvas up. And then I'll kind of drag that puddle off the canvas. And then we can get rid of it. So that is a much better shape. I like that more. And now the other thing we can always do is just turn our canvas. I think I'm going to do that and then work on another area. So you don't have to work on, you know, um, you don't, you can always turn your canvas around and make it easier to work on other parts. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work and put something up here. Maybe go back and put my string in. And I'm using kind of those, these whole strings. Um, in, a, in a little bit, I think I'll start cutting the string in half and using smaller, smaller pieces. And with smaller strings, you can get some you know, smaller shapes. So now, what do I want to do? I like this one a lot. I don't want to mess with that too much. Uh, I think I'll start maybe put one here. But maybe I'll try to make it a little more interesting shape. So I can kind of put a little bend in that, a little, a little more interest. And I'll start dragging this way. And this one's kind of light because we have a lot of base coat right there. And there's that puddle again. So I can tilt. And kind of pull that puddle down off the canvas. There we go. So that's an interesting shape. I kind of like this lighter blended area here. And I'm going to turn it again. Like that. So now I'm going to, I think I want to put something down here and I'm going to overlap this, the cool shape. The first one. So this is it's all kind of just making decisions and uh, playing with shapes. So I'm going to go in the on the canvas with the end of this string. And I want to overlap that. And I'm pulling kind of slowly so I can pull this puddle off with uh, off with the uh, string so it doesn't like uh, go over the string in back into the canvas but you can also kind of tilt again and pull that off that's interesting i'm going to try to uh, turn the so i'm going to go to the other view so there we go and See, I'm trying to arrange the, there we go. So now I'm going to work on this area so you can maybe see the, the string a little better from um, this different perspective. So I think I'll cut, here's a smaller string. I think I'll use this one. And I'll just do the same thing, just put it in my paint.
So I've got a, a big puddle of paint right here. So I'm going to try to encapsulate that with my string and pull that off. And sometimes those puddles make some interesting, cool effects. So they can be useful. And again, I'm going to tilt my canvas to help pull that string off or the uh, puddle off. So that's interesting. I, I want something dark right here. So I'm going to see if I can get a good, nice, dark shape there. Okay, so this is again the uh, what I call like a side shape. So I'm going to put the string on starting off of the edge of the canvas and then just pull the whole thing right off, <clears throat> right off this side. And here's that puddle of paint. And I'm going to just tilt a little bit, and then that'll kind of pull right off. So that's a nice shape. Whoops. Almost got a double string pull there. OK, so we've got some interesting things happening. I'm going to show you another um, kind of shape I like to make. I'm going to maybe take one of these and cut it in half to have a little shorter piece of string. Now this shape I'm going to going to put on the canvas and move it around, like pull it down this way, but I'm going to lift the string off, off the canvas. I'm not going to pull it shape all the way off the edge. So hopefully you could see that. Let me flip this around and do another one. There we go. I'm trying to line up the canvas there. So let me do another one of those. So again, this one, I just kind of, I laid the string down. And then I don't pull it off of the edge of the canvas. I just lift it off. And you get a very cool uh, shape, kind of like a, kind of like a leaf or like a flower petal. It's kind of a fun, that's kind of a fun, um, a fun shape to make. So let's see here. So I'm just looking at uh, what I've got and I'm just what bothers me. And there's a lot that bothers me in this painting, actually. <laughs> but uh, I just do one at a time and see what happens. Try different, try different ways of pulling the string. And I'm gonna, I want a big black um, shape right in here. There's a big puddle right there, which I don't like. So I'm gonna try dropping this on here. I'm gonna overlap that shape. You can also overlap a lot of shapes and that creates a lot more interest in overlapping. So I got that puddle. So I'm gonna kinda tilt the canvas and bring that puddle with me with the string. So this one also, I'm going to lift off the canvas, kind of like that. That was an interesting, kind of a cool shape. I want another dark one over here. I'm going to turn this. Let 
and then uh, do another edge shape maybe. So I'll cover this corner maybe with something. So I'll do another edge. So I'll start off of the side of the canvas, overlap this one. This will be very basic. And then I'll just pull the string off the side. And we have a very interesting uh, shape that kind of covers that, that corner. So I like that. And maybe I'll leave this corner silver. I think it's this corner up here. Um, so we have different different things happening in all the corners. I always like to have my corners be different in some way. Uh, different color, different shape, or different size of a shape, something like that. So I think we need something up here. And let me see. And then I'll stop and take a look at uh, any questions you might have. So I'll stop after this one and take a look. So I think I'll make a big shape with this string um, and see what happens. Okay. So I kind of like this one, but I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go off the... Let's try to see what happens with this. So I'm off of the side with that string. I'm going to just pull it back towards me. And pull that off. Now I got this big glob of black. I'm just going to reuse the same string and go right back and do another one. So you can do kind of like a double pull. There we go. So that's interesting. I think we're getting somewhere with this one. Um, let me go to the top camera so you can kind of get a better view of kind of what it's looking like. So maybe gonna, hopefully that clears up in a second. So that's getting kind of interesting. I like uh, a, lot, a lot of what's happening there. Um, I kind of like these black lines, but I really like the dark edges. And then we get this cool uh, uh, blending of color into the silver. So I think that's coming out kind of interesting. So let me uh, flip back over and see if you have any uh, questions. Got to wipe my hand off quickly. Okay, so let me check out any questions. Um, I'm going to scroll back up here. Um, no questions yet. Oh, JC said uh, she didn't notice the uh, paint puddles when using the ball chain. Yeah, you might not get that as much um, with the ball chain. It's a heavier, you know, material. Uh, or it, it could also be that, you know, my base coat, I've got too much paint on the base coat. You might have had a, um, a thinner base coat. So it's all, it all depends on a lot of different things. But yeah, the chain acts a tiny bit differently than, than the uh, string. Okay, let's see. Anything else? Yeah, Novala said that because they're heavier. That's right. Okay. Um, looking. Yeah, Donna said uh, um, it's a technique she can't get down. Yeah, it's not a, it's not as easy as it it looks. Actually, it's a little bit um, a little more complicated. It takes a little bit of finesse uh, and a little bit of patience. And mostly it's just playing around with the string and making the shapes um, and just trying different different things with the, the paint uh, and pulling the string a different way. So it does take a little bit of, of 
getting used to. It's definitely a different type of technique uh, than the other fluid techniques that we um, use all the time. Um, but it's fun and it's a, it's a fun, uh, different sort of way of, of working with the paint, which I, I like a lot. Let's see. Um, Jerry asks, will it have the same effect if you use multiple colors? Uh, multiple colors give you a, a very different look, um, especially the, the way I use them. I have like kind of a special device that I created uh, for having multiple colors. So you can get a very um, kind of a rainbow effect look. You could also put a multicolored base coat down and then just put one color with the, uh, drag the string with one color through the multi base coat, which will give you a completely different look. So there's a lot of different variations you can use with the uh, string pull. Um, you're kind of, you're, you can let your imagina imagination go wild really with different ways of uh, different color schemes, different um, uh, color palettes, different ways of getting different colors on the string. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different, different ways. And, uh, but this is kind of a, um, Michelle kind of likes it. It's starting to get a 3D look. Yeah, that's one of the things I like about it is it gives you a lot of dimension when you overlap the shapes a lot. Uh, especially if you're using colors, you can get even more of a, a 3D look uh, with multiple colors. And uh, oh, thank you. Dan says, I make it look easy. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, Angela has been a little afraid of this one. And it can be a little daunting, you know, but I'd say jump in and give it a shot. Um, it's really not that, it's really not that hard. And I mean, it's just, it's just some string and some paint. So it's, it's not like you have a huge investment in, uh, you know, time or materials or anything like that. Two colors is all you need really. Uh, and you could work on a, a smaller canvas. Uh, I like a little larger canvas for string pulls. It just gives you more working room. And that's actually a little easier uh, if you go to a little larger size. When you're really working really small, it's it's you know you don't have a lot of, of room to to work with, um, but um, yeah, I'd give it a try. You know, if you're interested in it, give it a shot. It's a fun one. I like it. Um, yeah, and um, uh, yeah, keep your paint a little a little thicker. You know, like my like my normal mix with that slight mound. That's what you want. Uh, you don't want like if your if your paints are like the Dutch pour, they're way too thin. So you want them thicker than that. So awesome, Angela. Yes, give it a try. I think you'll like it. So okay, no other questions, but but good comments. Thank you so much for commenting and uh, chatting in the comments. I'm gonna show you uh, one other, a couple other things you can do at this stage. And I'm going to put my black aside and I'm gonna put this, pull the silver out. Now we're gonna work with the silver over the black and see what happens with that. So we can kind of go back and forth uh, with the different colors. So let me flip back over. I'll go to the top view camera. And uh, I think I'll give you a better overall look. I'll maybe put some silver right in here and see what happens. So it's the same exact thing. I just put it in the silver cup, not the black cup. And you can also do this with multiple colors. If you just want to work with um, like three or four colors, and just have strings of each color, um, this is a great way to do it. So I'm going to start off of the side here. And I'm going to maybe try a little different pull. So now I'm going to lift the string up off of the There we go. So I kind of pulled the string off and left this puddle kind of just floating there. Um, it gives it a more interesting edge than having this whole 
big silver thing just pulled straight off the canvas. I kind of think that's interesting. Now we could work back with the black again, of course. Uh, maybe try another silver one over here. And you don't have to do this, of course. You know, this is just another, is not another option. Just something else you can do. Okay, so this is a smaller string, but I'm gonna maybe start here. And this one I'll just pull kind of right off the canvas. So that's an interesting shape. So maybe another one right here with the silver. See what happens there. I'm gonna cut this one. Okay. So maybe So this one, I really kind of pulled it right off the uh, off up off the canvas to make a kind of very, a very dark silvery shape. But now I'm going to go. I don't like this right here, so I'm going to just go back with the same string and pull that out. There we go. So now we so we can kind of lighten areas doing it this way. Uh, I think I'll go back to the black now and do maybe one or two more, and then maybe that will be it for this demo. So here's a very small one, but I kind of want to break up this silver shape. So then you can lift it right off and make an interesting you know, line and uh, let's see, maybe one more. And I think I'm going to put something over here. I want to kind of connect this shape to the edge. So that's another interesting kind of shape. I don't love this little circle though. So I'm just going to take the same string, just go right back over it, and then just pull that again. There we go. So that's kind of interesting. So that's this one's kind of bothering me, this big gigantic silver one now. So one more, and then I think I'll call that call that good. And so these kind of shapes I'm doing now, I. I typically use at the end of the painting, these kind of uh, more of like a floating shape, these really organic abstract type of shapes. This one I'll maybe make a little more traditional. So this is kind of the a standard string pull shape off the side. There we go. I like that one. I think that uh, that's it. I think I'm going to call that one good. I like these silver corner. I like this interesting silver shape that was our base coat. So it's kind of a, a negative space painting in a way. So I think that's an interesting demo. I like that one. I'm going to call that one good. Uh, I'm going to flip back over and uh, see if you have any other comments. I see a no. Um, uh, Apparently there was a baby elephant that is no more. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm just checking out the, the comments and seeing if there, there are any uh, questions. Sorry, I didn't see the baby elephant. My gosh. I'll have to look at the replay. Um, I think Angela called out the baby elephant. Uh, and someone saw a turtle? JC saw a turtle in there. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh my gosh, Anetsu is a rhinoceros? 
wow, you guys are seeing all these things in here. I'm just seeing like some, some shapes. Um, yeah, Donna asked if it would be cheating to use a blow dryer. I, I don't see why not. Try it out. Um, you could do a string pull in a section and blow dry another section. That would be cool. That's a, like a combo technique. Um, that would be interesting, actually. I'd give it a, a try, Donna. Good idea. And Annette says, uh, use a blow dryer for the base coat. That's a great idea, actually, Annette. Um, you could really blow it out fast. I don't know why I didn't think of that. That's a fantastic idea. Uh, blowing out the base coat with the hair dryer. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, JC I, does not like the elephant. I don't know. I didn't see the elephant. Oh my gosh, you guys are funny. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any comments. I see a lot of fantastic, well, a lot of fantastic comments, not any questions, but, uh, but uh, I'm glad you guys are, are finding all kinds of things in my painting. So things I would never ever see. So I guess that's one great thing about artwork is everyone sees it differently, um, except for the elephant, which everyone saw the elephant except me. But uh, anyway, if there are no other questions, um, I hope you enjoyed this technique. It is different. It's not a standard uh, fluid art technique like the, all the other ones, the flip cups and the ring pours and the Dutch pours. And, um, but it is a fun one to try. It's a, it's a bit different. And there's a lot of ways to uh, change it up and uh, make it your own, adding different colors. You know, I just use the two, but you could use a variety of colors doing the same thing. Just have a combination of different colors in there. Um, but, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was fun to do it. I think it turned out pretty, pretty interesting. I'll post the dry results uh, in the group when, we're, when it's all dry. Um, but thank you so much for joining me, everyone. If there are no other questions, um, uh, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. This was a fun one for me. You all had a blast chatting away in the group, in the comments. So, well, with that, I will say uh, thank you very much. Have, have a great weekend. And, uh, um, oh, my gosh, Angela. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, he'll live forever in video. So um, we have that to look forward to. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this is a fun one. And uh, I will see you uh, next week. Have a great weekend. And do some painting. Uh, if you try out the, the string pull, post it in the uh, Facebook group. I would love to see what you come up with. And uh, I'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.